Marcus Stroman's gone mental in a good way. We take a deeper dive into the Cubs' newest hurler, coming up next on Wednesday's edition of Locked on Cubs. You are Locked on Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, Cubs fans. Happy Wednesday to you. What's that they say? You, uh, It's not cold unless you can't go outside without cussing. And this morning, I was cussing up a storm. Nice and warm in here. Got the fireplace on. Happy Wednesday. This is Locked on Cubs. I'm Andrew Bellison. Just ask Marcus Stroman. 90% of the game of baseball is half mental, right? Before we dive in, we have so many good things to get to today. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Cubs your first listen of the day. Truly, I mean it. I appreciate every download. This is all new to me, this podcast game. I'm having a ball with it, first and foremost. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Please interact with us on Twitter. Makes things a lot more fun. Um, love to interact with Cubs fans and baseball fans in general. At Chicago Cubs PA, at Locked On Cubs on Twitter. Again, thank you for making us your first listen every morning, whether you're on your way to work, on your way to school, at home, in the car. Download us. Find us wherever you find your favorite podcast, always available and always free. We have a little bit of a, a change up today. Went with my, my good circle change for you guys today. Change things up just a little bit. Our food tour continues to roll on. We take a look at uh, some of the best and worst food offerings around Major League Baseball. I'm a fat kid at heart, so that's uh, one of my favorite segments as we roll on there and get towards the top 20 best food offerings around Major League Baseball. It's free agent season also, sort of, right? We're locked out, but it would be, so we're going to pretend like it's hot stove time and assemble our ultimate Cubs lineup. This is something that you might not know what it is. I'll explain when we get there. I'll give you mine. I want to hear about yours too. Also, new segment I want to introduce later in the week, Cubs mailbag. I want to take your questions, your Cubs questions, your baseball questions, questions about me, questions about the show, questions about what to get your cat for Christmas. I'm here to help. Please interact with us on social. I'm going to tweet out uh, a, a little tweet about that. Please respond with your questions at Chicago Cubs PA at Lockdown Sports. We'll get a little mailbag going, have a mailbag fan question segment, listener question segment here later on in the week or early next week. First, before we get to all of that, though, segment one, our new man, Marcus Stroman. I'm still so pumped to have this guy on the north side. I can't tell you. Um I wasn't a totally out of nowhere signing by any means, but just really still surprised me in a good way when it happened right before the lockout went into effect. We dove into the numbers last week. I mean, they speak for themselves. The guy's a stud on the mound. Um, he comes in and solidifies this Cubs rotation, which was a huge weakness, really. It makes the top three fifths just really, really good. I mean, him, Hendricks, Miley. I love that three-headed monster. We talked about it a lot. Shores up that back half with some of the more unproven and younger arms that the Cubs have just that much more too, and really takes the, takes the burden off them, um, which should allow them to, to have the ability to succeed, you know, maybe more than they would have, if they had a little bit higher expectation on them, let's face it. That's, that's how it goes. One of the things that I'm so obsessed with though, about Marcus Stroman obsessed in a good way is his approach to pitching off the field. I mean, we know what kind of physical shape he's in. We know what kind of pitcher he is, but he gets the approach to life and the game so well. His his off the field prep is so Joe Madden-esque and he's so in tune with the mental side of the game. And this is something that's not talked about enough. Um, Again, this wasn't planned for today, but NBC Sports Chicago's Tim Stebbins has a great article online. We're going to tweet that out as well so you can see it on our social media. A great piece kind of detailing the 
mental approach that Stroman takes to the game every day, whether he's pitching or not. And this extends beyond baseball and into life. And and I just love this kind of stuff. And for that reason, man, I'd love the opportunity to talk with Marcus strictly about this and what it's meant to his life and his play on the field. Because obviously it's helped him humongously. Um, the mental aspect of the game, what did Yogi say about it? It's it's 90% mental, right? The other half is physical or something like that, I think it was. Um, the sit-down with Stroh here was different. It's a heavy focus on mental well-being. He touched on it a lot uh, last week after he was officially introduced as the newest Cubs hurler. Um, this is a twofold thing for me. What's the big deal you're sitting home saying? Who cares the mental approach? You go out and you play the game. It's totally not true, man. I mean, first of all, it's so, so, so important in baseball, I feel like, above any sport. And if you've played competitive baseball at any level, you'll realize this. And I love talking with former players about the mental side, especially pitchers. It's it's just a tough, tough position to play. But if I can speak personally about my own 10-day Division Three baseball career that I had, um, I always said I had the skills to succeed and maybe make it to the next level. Very low, low pro ball or indie ball. Maybe had I played longer than 10 days in college, that is. But I didn't have the brains. I didn't have it between the ears in terms of approaching the game mentally the right way to get you through the highs and lows of a long season. Look at a Major League Baseball season's 162 games to follow that through while keeping a constant and a steadiness and a calmness within yourself dealing with the ups and downs and an inner balance up here is just so much easier said than done. I always love Joe Madden and who is, you know, so in tune with, with this part of himself, what he always said to his players and, and his teams. And I feel like Marcus Stroma would relate to this. I'd love to ask him about this quote. Joe would say, stay in the moment, be present, not perfect. Worry about the process, and the outcome will take care of itself in a positive way. I love that. For Marcus to speak openly about this, I think it's wonderful. Thank you, Marcus. Seriously, it takes courage. Um, you know, it's fair to say that a lot of people don't recognize this part of the game or don't recognize that it does exist or what might go into it. You know, they just tend to focus on the physical aspect of baseball itself. Um, but it's such a big part of sport and baseball in general. I want to take time to to go over some of the some of the my favorite things that Marcus said last week in some of his introductory press conferences and whatnot about this side of the game, what it means to him, um, and how it's changed his approach and his whole life. He starts by saying that it's more important as a human being, first and foremost. He said, "I think mental health is one of the most important aspects that people don't focus on." Why does this matter? You're right, Marcus. This is why it matters, because people don't want to talk about it. It's taboo. It's still after all these years, which is ridiculous. Um, to shed some light on his daily game approach, whether he's on the hill or not, um, he has a mental coach and a therapist, which he meets with and speaks with on days that he's going to pitch, talks to them both, get his head right, be in the right space so he can succeed physically. Um, he said, this world is a lot. And that's that's an understatement. Um, it's a toxic place at times, and it can drive you to place where you kind of want to go crazy, which is uh, totally true. He said, and I've learned I've learned how to take a step back. I've learned how to really focus on my mental side. He also admitted that the stigma uh, is there around mental health. But he said, it's something that I was too prideful at first to even think about doing, which is like most people, like I said, they don't want to talk about it. But he said, I've had a lot of family and friends that encouraged it. And I'm so thankful I opened up to it because if I didn't, I don't think I'd still be in the position I am today. Because like I said, it's a lot. It's a lot for any human being to deal with. And then when you add being an athlete. Uh, I think it's just so cool. It's so forward thinking of him, understanding all of the aspects that come together to create one full person, one full athlete. I always said this with Joe. I was a big Joe Madden fan because of his approach. Um, 
that the lessons he would teach us about the Cubs in baseball stretch so far beyond the baseball field, they could be transferred into life parallels so easily. And, and I feel like the same the same can be said about Marcus. Just such a cool dude, it seems, to, to have this approach. Um, and it's just really awesome, awesome stuff. He, he closed by saying that he's never been more calm in his life. He says, I'm able to find my calm, work through any adversity, and through any turbulence. These practices have allowed him to get to that point. I mean, you're 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 talking about an athlete that's as complete and round and present as it gets. And I have said it a thousand times, and I'll say it a thousand more. I'm just so excited for him, so happy for him. And I'm pumped for us Cubs fans because he's a North Sider for at least three years. Should be so much fun to watch. Great stuff coming up. I have built the ultimate Cubs lineup. What the heck is the ultimate Cubs lineup? I'll explain in a little while. Before I do, I want to tell you about Built Bar. This holiday season, I'd like you to grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. It's the Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate. But amazingly, it's low in calories. It's low in sugar. It's low in net carbs and fat, but it doesn't skimp on the protein, which is the beauty of it. You get the both, the best of both worlds, which is always hard to find, delicious and healthy. So many flavors, you'll have a hard time choosing. Would it be raspberry or mint brownie or cherry or double chocolate? How about cookies and cream? My favorite, peanut butter brownie. You got to try the Built Bar. Do yourself a favor. Like some of those marshmallowy treats around the holidays, you need to get your hands on Built Bar Puffs. They're light, they're fluffy, and marshmallowy through and through. Different flavors, all covered in chocolate. Tastes so good, you won't believe they're filled with protein. Try it today, please. Do yourself a favor. I know you're going to like it. Go to built.com. That's built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, to get 15% off your order. Ultimate Cubs lineup from me to you. Coming up next, this is Locked on Cubs. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison, at Chicago Cubs PA on Twitter. I want to thank you again, sincerely, for being with us here today and joining us every morning. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Find us wherever you download download your favorite podcast. We're always a free, we're always free and always available. At Chicago Cubs PA at Locked On Cubs. Engage with us socially, please. Makes things a lot more fun. I want to dive into something that was a pretty cool thing that, that we did last year during the COVID lockout. I was the voice of Marquee Sports Network for a little while, the, the, uh, the, ad, the ad promo reader, you know. Tomorrow, the Cubs take on the Giants, that guy. Um, what we did at one point there during the COVID shutdown was create our ultimate Cubs lineup. What does this mean, you ask exactly? I'll tell you what it means. It means you got to win one ball game. One game, who you putting out there on the field just to win one game. You can pick from any Cub to ever wear a Cubs uniform. I think this is so cool. Tweet me your Cubs lineups, your ultimate Cubs lineups. I'd love to see them. As a matter of fact, tweet them to me at Chicago Cubs PA. We'll read some of them in future shows because I love to compare and see what you came up with compared to what I came up with. One through nine, starting pitcher. And a bench guy. Closer as well. This is fun. Let me dive in. I started off in center field. I'm a traditionalist. I love the old school slappy, slap hitting leadoff hitter guy. Juan Pierre only played one season with the Cubs, but he leads off for me. He was here in 2006. That season led the league in hits with 204. Also stole 58 bases. Like I said, I'm old school mentality. I love the old prototypical leadoff hitter. Doesn't strike out. Gets on base a ton. Doesn't have a ton of power. Juan checked all those boxes as a great table setter. Not to mention, for five seasons in a row, 03 through 07, he played 162 games a year. That's sensational. I think Mark Grace moving into my second spot in the lineup at first base was a no-brainer for me. All-time favorite player of all time in any league, anywhere, any sport, any game, Mark Grace was the man. I was a left-handed first baseman growing up. I thought I was Mark Grace. I'm sure my swing looked nothing like his, but up here, they were identical. 
Mark would be a phenomenal two hitter. Um, we know what he did with the glove. We know what he did with the bat. He was such an integral part of the Cubs organization for so long. And the 90s leader in hits. The guy was a doubles machine. A wonderful compliment to this Cubs lineup. My ultimate Cubs lineup hitting number two. Can't hit an, uh, you can't have an ultimate Cubs lineup without Mr. Cub Ernie Banks. The only question is, where do you play him? Shortstop or first base? I actually played more games at first base throughout his career, little known fact. But I've got Ernie at short, MVP years, mid-50s, hitting third for me in the ultimate Cubs lineup. How about Hack Wilson batting cleanup? You can't go wrong with Hack Wilson. Had 1,063 ribbies in his career and just 1,348 games played. Not to mention... 100 plus driven in during each season from 1926 to 1930, including a mind blowing 191 RBI in 1930. Clobbered 177 home runs during that stretch. Great protection for Ernie. I love Hack Wilson hitting cleanup. Also, can't have an ultimate Cubs lineup without the sweet swing of Mr. Billy Williams playing left field and batting fifth for me. Billy, Hall of Famer, numbers speak for themselves. If I'm starting a team, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm drafting Billy with my first pick. He's one of the kindest individuals you're ever going to meet. And he also just happens to have one of the greatest swings in the history of baseball. So win-win there. Rolling on, let's protect Billy in that lineup with number 10, Ron Sano. This was a coin flip for me between Ron and KB. Um, it's win-win, if you ask me. I did flip the coin, landed on heads, which was Sano. Uh, he, he'll hit sixth and play third base in my ultimate Cubs lineup. You can't argue with the numbers that he put up over his career, especially considering he played on some pretty bad Cubs teams uh, there in the early mid-60s. Um, but it never derailed him from playing with that passion that he had. And you need that. You need that fire. That's infectious on a ball club. Ron Sano hits sixth and plays third base. Catcher? You're the quarterback of the field, right? I mean, my wife was a softball catcher, so I have to I have to put a, a very high importance on that position. But it is. I mean, you're the signal caller. How about Jody Davis? He's calling the shots. He's the leader. I want him hitting seventh for me behind the dish in my ultimate Cubs lineup. Jody had a great run on the north side. Uh, he's a gold glove winner. He was an all-star. In 86, he led all National League catchers and putouts, assists, runners caught stealing. Uh, honorable mention here to the Rebel Randy Huntley. I, hard to pick against him, but I'm going Jody Davis. This one might be a little obscure, but hitting eighth for me and playing second base is a guy that you might not know a ton about. Um, his, his playing career was extremely short, and that's Ken Hubbs. This is super obscure, I know. Um, and I know this lineup is just to win one big game, but I wanted to make it fun, and I wanted to to throw a little twist on there. Obviously, Ryan Sandberg, Javier Baez, no brainers uh, for your ultimate Cubs lineup at second base. I get that. There's just no telling how good Kenny Hubbs could have been um, at the big league level, however. He was the 62 National League Rookie of the Year, and he was a gold glove winner that same season. Just 21 years old when he played his last game in the big leagues in 1963 before passing away in a tragic plane accident. Kenny Hubbs, the sky was the limit. I'd love to have him at second base for me. On the mound, so many good options. I know for me, it was Fergie Jenkins. It makes total sense. You have one game to win. He's an innings machine, a workhorse. Um, plus, he's not going to give up any free passes, which you cannot do in a one-and-done situation. Get this, Fergie walked just 997 batters in over 4,500 career innings. Let me say that again. 997 batters in just 4,500 4, innings. That is insane to me. Couple that with the over 3,000 strikeouts. Uh, it's it's one of the, it's a feat accomplished by just a handful of pitchers ever. And, and Fergie was one of them. He also belted six home runs, and you might need a little offensive spark from your pitcher while they can still hit. So I want him in the lineup, too. Fergie's my pitcher in my ultimate Cubs lineup. Need a timely pinch hit off the bench in this must-win game? Lenny Harris is your guy. Lenny wasn't a Cub for very long. And again, I know there was a lot of choices for someone to come off the bench, but he's the all-time leader in pinch hits with 212 of them. It's a very, very hard thing to do. I mean, it. we, we always... 
as fans get frustrated when a guy sits on the bench for three hours, comes in to pinch hit in the ninth inning and strikes out on three pitches. Well, guess what? I mean, you're cold as ice and you've been out of the game for three hours upstairs, going back to that mental side of the game. It's a very hard job. Lenny Harris was the best to ever do it. He played only 75 games for the Cubs, but he's a guy I want coming off the bench, late inning, in a tight spot. Finally, who's going to close it out? you got a 3-2 lead end of the ninth. Who are you giving the ball to? Again, tons of great choices. For me, no-brainer. Rod Beck, the shooter, is my guy. Nobody made it more fun or interesting than him. I feel like he always put guys on second and third, but always found a way to wiggle out of it. Plus that dangling arm that he had, that big old Fu Manchu, he looked like a closer. You're going to pitch the part, you got to play the part. 51 saves for that 98 wildcard team. Rod Beck closing out ball games for me. Can't beat it. That's my ultimate Cubs line. I'm, I want to hear yours. Tweet it at me, at Chicago Cubs PA, at Lockdown Sports. Have fun with it. You got one game to win. Play around with it. You never know what you might come up with. Um, I'm going to channel my, my inner guy, Fietti, coming up here in a little bit as our ballpark food tour rolls on here on Locked On Cubs. Before we do, just want to take the time to remind you that Bet Online has you covered with more props, odds, and better lines than ever before all football season long as the season continues to march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% deposit bonus. That's right, 50% deposit bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to get your bonus today from basketball to football to the NHL to boxing to UFC to all your favorite casino games as well. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and the easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Food tour rolls on after this. Great to have you back with us here on Locked on Cubs. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison at Chicago Cubs PA. Thank you for being with us again here today. Happy Wednesday. Hope your week is going great. I'm channeling my inner guy, Fietti, here. Where are you, man? It's a multi-part series. We take a look at some of the best and worst food offerings around Major League Baseball, ranked from worst to first. From number 30, Mr. Irrelevant, the other day, we counted backwards, Oakland, Tampa, KC, Detroit, the White Sox, Toronto, and now we land at number 24 on our list of worst food or best, depending on which way you look at it, around Major League Baseball is, drumroll please, Bush Stadium in St. Louis. I've told you before, I don't eat meat. I'm a pescatarian. I'm very picky about what goes in my body. So this does not rank super high on my list. 24th overall, but their best food item, a bacon-wrapped hot dog. You could find it in Section 128 of the Cardinals game. Let's go over the topping, shall we? Jumbo hot dog wrapped in applewood smoked bacon, topped with baked beans, pico de gallo, spicy aioli, and crispy fried onions. Very simple. Keeps Bush on the lower third of our list. That does absolutely nothing for me, I won't lie. Let's keep the food train rolling down to the 23rd on our list counting from worst to first we go out west way west angel stadium this to me could have ranked a little bit higher and and you might agree you might disagree but it's great hand food at a ball game which is key i love that easy to eat how about taco tuesday on a wednesday chronic tacos from a local socal joint at angel stadium Very simple. Meat or not, leave it off. Make it veg. Pico de gallo, some shredded lettuce. Hard to beat a good homemade Mexican cuisine meal. I love it. Angel Stadium Chronic Tacos. For number 22 on the list, we're going to keep it out west. Dodger Stadium, the other team in L.A. This had one piece of saving grace for it. Otherwise, this is number 40 on a list of 30 to me. Overall, 22, best food offering, the Dodger Dog. And here's why it got up to number 22. Classic Dodger Dogs, if you've never had one, and I have not, 
long. I've heard him described as sort of mushy, um, very skinny beef pork combo hot dog blend. One of the most famous foods in baseball. I mean, a Dodger dog is a very well-known ballpark staple. Um, they have a steam version and a grilled version. The steam version sounds absolutely atrocious to me. I'm not going to sit here and pretend. This saved Dodger Stadium's food ranking overall and brought it to number 22 because they now offer a vegetarian one, which I would try. Still, probably not super healthy for you, but something that would be fun to try as a vegetarian. What they do with this one um, is the plant-based version is they smoke it with maple hardwood chips to create the charred flavor. Dodger dog vegetarian. I know some of you are saying, Ugh. well, give it a shot. Number 22 overall on our list. Down to number 21. Tomorrow we'll start top 20 best foods in all of Major League Baseball. The ballpark that comes in at number 20 resides in the National League Central. It is Great American Ballpark. This is a weird one. Their best food offering, you might have heard of it, Skyline Chili. You a chili fan? Maybe you're not. Beans in there or no? Depends who you talk to. Skyline Chili, much like a lot of things that are, you know, uh, uh, specific to one city are loved in that place and then completely frowned on by by outsiders. If you're going to do Skyline Chili, order it five way. Do you know what that is? Five way chili, a spaghetti base, then Skyline Chili on top. Mounds of shredded cheese on top of that, diced onions and beans. One, two, three, four, five. I pity the person that sits next to you should you have that at Great American Ballpark for lunch before the game. I want to take this time to uh, remind you briefly that you can make your second listen of the day, Locked On Bets. It's your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Locked On Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. We continue tomorrow our top 20 now in food. Our food tour rolls on around Major League Baseball. Also, we're going to start to break down the Cubs by position group, starting with the bullpen. Is it as bad as you think? Maybe, maybe not. We'll get into that tomorrow. Locked on Cubs rolls on tomorrow. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Andrew Bellison. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you guys tomorrow.